I'm gonna wait a few seconds for people to join. That way you don't know. Really like. I know. Okay, so people can watch. That's a good thing to know. So we got one watcher. Okay, we got Ger Gerald Branch is on. Alright, so I'm gonna start off the video because we got some people watching. Hey guys, it's Maddie here and Today, it's our live show, as usual, and I'm going to be interview, interviewing, um, I'm going to be interviewing Andy Sabish. Is it Andy Sabish? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be interviewing him again, because we just did the, C, the CTX boot camp, and the, it was, pr it was pretty good. Cool. We learned a lot. And wow, we already have a lot more than our test <laughs> that we did. So, right now, I'm just watching him see if he's on or not. Can you make sure it's... Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, we're just wa I'm just watching to see if he's joined or not. I can see and hear you. Okay, that's nice to know. So, if I just didn't see him pop up, can you please, guys, tell me that he's on here or not? Yo, Maddie, what's up? Yo! So... Yeah, we're live. And before we get started, I'm just going I'm just going to tell you about what we're doing. We're inter I'm going to be interviewing a Andy Sabish again. And before we get to that, let's get to the um prizes. We're going to so we're doing our giveaway. All you have to do is um share this video and put I shared in the comments and people are already doing that as I said. Okay. So, yeah. So we're giving away three Digging with Maddie patches. Remember, tell them they have to be here. We're giving away our regular patch. On top of that, our old patch, which has like the denim looking um jeans, jean background, that, and it's black. But then we have the same thing, but white. Then <clears throat> we're giving. Are we giving this way? Okay. So Andy's on. Hold on, wait for it today to bring him on camera. Didn't we already give this away? No, we have another one. Okay. So, we're giving away another U.S. waist belt plate. It's, it has, like, what it says about it on there. It's the plate, but not real. What? I'm trying to figure out how to bring Andy on there. Just wait. Hold on. That's messing with something. Andy says he's here. Yeah. I was looking for the thing that pops up that says he's here. So, another giveaway that we're doing, um, we're giving away Intro to Civil War, A Beginner's Guide to Civil War Bullets. Looks pretty cool. Okay, why can't we bring Andy on now? We're having some trouble bringing Andy on. Hold on. Can't mix up Michelle says hi. Hi. Oh. It does not say he's watching. What happened? What happened? I don't know. I was just scrolling up. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What'd you do? Okay, there we go. Charlene says he hasn't gotten invites. Because it doesn't say he's watching yet. Yeah, the little thing that popped up, it's supposed to... It's supposed to have a little thing that pops up, but... How do we... Hold on. Um... Hmm. Look for his name. Okay. Uh, I got this. I'll hold the top. He's not... It doesn't show him watching. What we're having a problem with. Hmm. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, it's not in the show he's watching. Nicole. That's not good. <laughs> I'm writing people's names down that share. Okay. Well, Andy, tell Andy he's got to comment again or something because he says he's not watching. 
You might want to go look in the comments for some funny things. Let's try again. Someone. Man. Tallulah just posted something. It doesn't uh, show Andy watching. Charlene says, send me an invite. She's not. It doesn't show her either. Here, type in Andy's name. Okay. A. I got the. Andy Savage, invite. There we go. We sent one to Andy. Oh, hopefully it works. So tell him you sent him one. All right. So people keep spamming. I shared everywhere. <laughs> Hold on. Andy Savage is watching. Oh, here we go. I can't even stop for a second. Yeah. Bring Andy. At He's gonna be up. Here, in like ten seconds. Keep there you go. So yeah, as you guys see, he's right here, in the figment of imagination. He's right there. Hello. He's gonna be up right. here, in like ten seconds. Keep Can you turn yours off? Yes. Hello. Hello. So, howdy. So. As you guys know, I'm going to be interviewing him again because we just did the CTX boot camp. And, um, hello. hello. So, really quickly before we get to the interview, I just want to do a really quick, um, mail call. Okay? So, background. So, you know, I think um, I got into this in, in 1964. So I've been metal detecting for 53 years. And um, my parents got me a metal detector, thought it would be a, a six month gift and it'd wind up in a closet. And 53 years later, I'm still still using a metal detector. Um, I've had the opportunity to pretty much travel around the world with it. And it's just it's, you know, as we talked about at the boot camp, it's just a phenomenal hobby that just gets better every every year you go out. So much for a six-month gift. So, um, so... So what got you... I'm going to flip it around, Maddie. I'm going to ask you, what got you into metal detecting? Well, what got me into metal detecting was my dad over there, or, well, right here. He, um, he, I was out detecting with him. I didn't have metal detector at the time. He had a CTX. He was out in the woods. He gets a signal. I pick it up. I'm looking at the screen. I have no idea what it's saying. I'm saying, I'm going to learn this one day. And also, there there was a show called, um, the what was it called? Um, was the um, was, um, KG and Ringy? What was that show? 
American uh, Diggers? It was, diggers? Uh, diggers? Yeah, Diggers. It had KG and Ringy on it, and that just encouraged me to um, to detect. So, yeah, ever since then, I've just been a, um, a kid, a kid that detects. So, now that we got that question out of the way, um, our next question, um, tell, can you tell the viewers about the boot camps that you do? Well, we started the boot camps probably about four or five years ago. And um, we started because we get a lot of people that buy higher end detectors that really never get the full benefit of using it. And uh, trying to help them one on one sometimes is difficult. So what we did was we put the boot camps together and it's, it's an all day training session. Um, we follow up with newsletters and, and other information so people stay up to date with what the latest tips and techniques are. But when you get a whole group together, you can, you can cover the machine and then take them out in the field and explain to them, you know, how does it work and show them hands on. It kind of drives the point home. So we started with training people one on one and then try to find a way to, to leverage that. And the boot camps really allowed us to, to boost that up. We've, we've done a, um, close to 500 uh, people have been through the boot camps over the last four to five years. Hmm. Huh? And you're one of them. Yeah, I'm one of them. <laughs> so, yeah. That yep, was... You, your father, and your mother, both. Yeah. Three. That, hey, that makes us, that makes us pretty cool. <laughs> okay. So, for, and real quickly, if any of you guys watching want, want to ask Andy a question, just put it in the little comment section thing right there, and... Hopefully, I'll hopefully I'll see it, and actually, and I'll um and I'll say it to him, right there. So yeah, you can do that, guys. So back on to the questions. Um, how many um boot camps do you have a have a year? Um, this year we we've, we've got fewer this year than we we normally do, and the reason is is we're taking a group to England in the fall, so that kind of impacted our schedule. Um, last year we did a large number. We actually drove fifteen thousand miles last year to the, you know the various boot camps. So um, anywhere from ten to fifteen a year is typically what we wind up doing. Hmm. There's a question right there. Hi, Andy. How were the hunting grounds 40 years ago compared to today? That came from Kenneth. Kenneth. He's the one who gave you the patches. Yeah, it was from the guy that gave me the patches. So, like Ken, like how Kenneth said, how was hunting, the um, hunting grounds different 40 years ago from now? Well, 40 years ago, you rarely saw another guy with a metal detector. Um, obviously, that's changed. Um, also, 40 years ago, you could still find silver coins and wheat pennies in circulation. So uh, even though the metal detectors may not have gone quite as deep as they do today, um, if, if you, you know, you, you'd go to schools or parks, and if you found less than 20 or 30 silver coins in, in a trip, you were having a bad day. Um, I remember hunting some of the uh, parks, the beaches outside of New York City, uh, in the late 70s, and we actually had a competition to see who could fill up Ziploc baggies full of gold rings first. So, you know, 10 rings a day was not uncommon. So obviously things have changed, but back then the competition was less, but the, the equipment obviously was nowhere near as good. So there's still a lot of good finds being made today, even though there's a lot more competition. Yeah. Now... Me and my dad have to go back in time. That way we could. That way, but my dad could be the gold magnet he is and get every single ring that's out there and get like thirty rings a day. <laughs> Which makes, for some reason, totally sense. Total sense. So, what is your? Well, I think you think your dad was hunting. How, how, how long has your dad been hunting? He's been hunting a number of years. Twenty six. Twenty six years. So, I mean, even, even back 20-something years ago, I mean, there was definitely uh, fewer people hunting then than there is now. Um, 
You didn't have YouTube. You didn't have TV TV shows. So there were fewer people out hunting, but you know, there, there's still still a lot of stuff out there to find. Yeah, and back then, my dad was a very very weak gold magnet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Right, so this is what is Douglas your Day. favorite place to hunt? So Douglas Day, he just um post he has um commented, what is your favorite place to hunt? Did he hear you? Did he? I think I caught the last question there, Maddie. Um Douglas Day, he commented, What is your favorite place to hunt? Well, again, I think it depends on what kind of hunting. Um, obviously, you know, relic hunting, I've got a passion for Civil War relic hunting. Um, Atlanta, Richmond, Petersburg area on private permissions. Um, underwater metal detecting, I prefer lake hunting over ocean hunting. It's just easier to hunt in lakes, especially if you dive. And coin hunting, I just, you know, again, when it comes to coins, I like to go to older sites. That, that have been pretty heavily hunted and just proved to myself there's still something there. So it depends on what kind of targets I'm looking for. Yeah. Like my dad, he, me and my dad have two different spots. If we feel like going to get, a, if my dad feels like going to get a bu like a bunch of gold rings, then, then he'll decide. When, on. Um, when you upgrade to a new machine, do you find yourself going over ground you hunted or new grounds? You gotta be louder. So, someone just asked, when you upgrade to a new machine, do you find yourself going to places that you that you um always go, or like new places? If I'm getting it, if I've got a new new metal attack and I want to see how it compares to what I've been using, I'm going to take it to a site that I know I've been hunting before to see if I can find something I've missed before. Um, if I'm just out looking for things, it may be a new site, it may be a, a site I've been to before. But typically, with a new metal attack, I'm going to compare it to what I'm used to, and I'm going to go to a site that I know that I, I've hunted before, so I know what the conditions are like. Yeah. That's from Patrick. For a beginner, what do you say from Patrick? Um, so Patrick Cronin just uh, just asked you, for a beginner, where should you suggest starting to hunt? Well, it's a, it's a good question. I've actually got a coworker of mine that's, that's just started to metal attack and I got him interested in it. Um, I, we started with his yard and. Uh, that, that's a great place to start. You never know what you, you, you know, unless it's a brand new house, you're probably going to find something. It's probably something you've lost yourself. Um, the local playgrounds, tot lots, wood chips, it's easy to dig. Um, you, you hate to have somebody go to a manicured yard and start digging, you know, digging holes if they're not sure how to use it yet. So I always tell people start in their own yard, go to a school, go to a park um, where you can hunt in the playgrounds. Um, if you've got a beach nearby, that's another good place to try. But someplace where you know you're going to find targets and you're not going to worry, you're not worried about trying to dig manicured lawns. Yeah, that means I have to go in my backyard and see if I can find the stuff my, either my dad, me or my dad lost. Yeah, but not a lot of dirt goes in our backyard, so I would have a hard time finding anything. So... Our next question for you, that's not from somebody else. How do you go about researching places to detect? Do you use like books, old maps, the internet, word of mouth, or other methods? Well, obviously, you know, some of it's old school, um, you know, county atlases, the old atlases from the 1800s or earlier helped me zero in on some potential spots to search. Um, if, if you're in an area that's not been developed, unfortunately, when I lived, you know, I grew up in New York City, and uh, most of the areas even surrounding the city have all been built over and developed. So even if you find an old 
park, it's typically going to be a parking lot by now. So assuming the area that you live in isn't overly developed, um, old maps can typically lead you to, to, to productive sites. Um, the local historical society, you know, most of the people there are more than happy to help you learn about the history of the area, find out where the old one room schoolhouses were, parks, church, picnic groves. Um, talk to some of the old timers. I mean, I've gotten more leads from talking to local people that have been there for their whole life um, than, than I could ever have found doing research. So obviously the old school techniques are using maps, um, but a lot of them are available online now. You can, you can very easily find these maps electronically and do the research right from your house. So research is the key though. Yeah, that's what my dad does. He, um, hold on, someone just asked a question. Cheryl Bell asked, what is the, what is, what is the best item you ever found? What is the best find I've ever found? Well, I'm sure a lot of people base best find on the value. And I mean, I've, I've found jewelry that I've, you know, done recoveries for that are 30 or $40,000 rings. Um, I don't, I, I hate to put a dollar value making that my best find. Um, I've got a Civil War belt buckle with an individual, the soldier's name engraved on the back. To me, that's priceless. Um, what's it worth? I'm not sure. I'd never sell it. Um, I probably returned over 200 rings and each one of those, you know, I, I never, I never asked for, and I hate to take a reward. So monetarily wise, I didn't make much off of it, but the feeling of being able to give somebody a ring back that's been lost for 10, 20, 30 years to me, that's priceless. So some of my best finds have been either historical finds, which have wound up in museums or personal items that I can trace back a hundred years or items that I've been able to return that have been lost for decades. Yeah. Like you were saying about um, how most people base their stuff on how good it is on a price or something. Me and my dad, we don't do that. Um, like I could get a ring that looks, that looks plain, but it's like a billion dollars and a ring that has a, like a trillion diamonds in it, it's only worth one dollar. I love the one with the trillion diamonds in it, <laughs> even though it's only worth a dollar. <laughs> or if you get a key holder, or if you well, get like, a lock, that looks pretty cool. TV shows, the the winner of the show is based on the, the most valuable item that they find. Yeah. Okay, we got another question from Mark Gregory. Mark Gregory, um, what's that say? Pettit. Pettit. What is, I think I missed that, Maddie. I think we're having some way. connection. Yeah. What is the best way to ask for permissions? Did he hear you? Did, did you hear me? I think we lost him, guys. Oh. Okay, I think he's back. Okay, I think he's back. What was, what's um, the best way so what to ask for permissions did you get that mm -hmm. oh, yeah I think we're moving him okay. we may have to go to the phone did someone wrap our house in tin foil? Mm. Okay, hold on. If you go to the phone, let me know. Yeah, we might have to go to the phone. Um, you still there?
Uh, he left. Right, so okay, I just keep talking. Tell, so, him, tell everybody about this. Okay. While we're so, next show, we're going to be interviewing Gary Penta. And f for that show, he sent us some little... He sent us some little minifigures of detectors to give away. So, I don't know about your house, but I wrap my head in tin foil every night. Mm -hmm. So, the one detector is the Safari. He, he made a little set of it. Um, it has a little Mind Lab hat right there. The Safari right there. Got its headphones, its manual, and a pinpointer over here. Yeah, Tim, Tim Wendell's correct. There are aliens <laughs> messing up the internet. And, and, and then um, we got another detector. Called, it's the Xterra 505. Have the Xterra 505. It's, um, man, it's manual. Got the um, hat and the, um, the headphones. So that's really cool. And you can't get these online because they're not for sale. This is the only place you're getting these. Right. And it's next show. You have to be around at the next show to be able to do that, to get these. And do you want to get the stuff during this show? You have to, if you want to get the stuff during this show, you have to um, share the video and put I shared. And you'll have a chance. Out of the ton of people that are sharing to get stuff. And then so, continue. I think we got Andy back. Hold on, he's on. Oh. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, let's okay. see if everybody can hear that. He's on the phone okay. now, so. Hold on. So, Andy, you there? I'm here. Okay, guys, can you hear him? Blake Colin put two right, so frames. We'll go back to the questions. Okay. Um, so, I have a question for you. Okay. The one that I was asking before was from Mike Gregory P um, Pettit. What is the best way to ask for per for permissions? Well, I mean, that's, that's probably the, uh, the the question everybody always asks. And I, I guess I'm, I'm not, I always think about it saying that if somebody knocked on my door to the metal tech by yard, I'm not sure if I would give them permission or not. But, you know, obviously the, the, the key to it is you don't want to come there after you've been digging all morning, so make sure you you know you, you don't look like you've been digging all day. Um, don't go as a group. Um, you know, if you've got two or three people that you want to hunt with, make sure only one person goes to the door. Um, and take the time to, to kind of rehearse the speech that you want to give the property owner. Um, I, I personally never mention I'm looking for coins, jewelry, anything with dollar signs associated with it. Um, I think most of the people nowadays know what a metal detector is. They've seen the TV shows. So, you know, if you stress the history, if you stress the, the ability to return anything that you find that could be tied directly to the family, I, you know, I, I find most of the time that, that you do get permission. Um, I'll, I'll give a plug to a friend of mine, Todd Yerkes, up in, uh, uh, up in New York. Um, and and he's, he's an avid permission guy, so he, he either hunts... Uh, property that's that's uh, out in the woods or private permissions, and he has like a 90% success rate. So he's got a script, and if you go to cttodd.com, uh, just click on that link, the link for uh, permission, and they just follow his his script, and it, it, it works very well. But um, you know, again, my my words is advice are don't go dirty, don't go with a big shovel over your shoulder, uh, don't go with a group, and if if you got a a youngster with you, um, that always helps as well. I know that when I used to take my son and daughters with me, your son and daughter with me, we, we got permission more often than if it was just me. So they're they're more likely to let you hunt if you get a son or a grandson or a you know, granddaughter or granddaughter with you. you know, so if you got a got a teenager younger kid, bring them with you and you probably get permission easier than just knocking on the door by yourself. Yeah. If you like one time, me and my dad went to go get permission at a farm, at a farm, and we walk up. My dad's like, can we, he asks if we can detect this farm, and he says that we'll give you, um, we'll give you back the stuff that we find. 
So the guy's like, you wanna, when are you gonna go? He goes, right now. If you say yes, though. He goes, sure. So we go out there, but Ad finds, he finds some pretty good stuff. Then, when we go back, he's like, the guy's like, what you find? So, my dad puts his hand out, and he has, like, these all these little things. He's like, huh. He's looking at it. One by one, he takes one by one little things. And I'm just watching him. And all he leaves is, um, is a penny that got hit by a plow. <laughs> <laughs> he took everything. There was one thing that looked like it was, like, copper or something. He's like, I could use that for scrap, and he takes it. <laughs> And we also do scrap. <laughs> so that that would have been good. Alright, here's a question from Patrick Cronin. Yes, we got an, we got a question from Patrick Cronin. Do you use the same detector for all of the locations or do you have different detectors for for like for beach or parks or lakes? Well, I think I've I've seen my, my detector hurt out a little bit, but I I've, I've got over I think I've got eighteen detectors right now uh, that I use. Um, obviously, you know, if I'm prospecting or if I'm beach hunting or saltwater beach hunting or uh, diving, you know, there, there's different detectors. You know, uh, when I go when I go park or school hunting, um, I usually have two or three different detectors in the in the car with different search coils. So, um, unfortunately, I don't have one machine I use all the time, but I've got different detectors for different applications. Okay. So well, me and my dad, we only use like one detective for all. So like, we'll take out, we'll take out right now our equinoxes and go anywhere, only using that because that's just kind of how I've learned to um, detect along with my dad. Well, I mean, I, I think there's clearly, you know, several of the machines out there pretty much can do it all. Um, but again, I mean, if, you know, if, if, if you're a diver, I mean, I can't take an equinox to 40, 50 feet down. Um, you know, on the same token, you know, if I'm, you know, gonna, you know, gonna be, you know, hunting in, in an overgrown area, I need a smaller coil right now because the equinox isn't the answer. But, you know, obviously the equinox uh, is really a great all around machine. I mean, my life clearly has put a lot of thought into the machine and, and it, it shows out in the field. Yeah, it's it's a pretty good machine, and um, very quickly, some people are asking um if you some people are asking um if you think you could um post a link for the um for that speech for the um if you're asking for permissions. So uh, the the link for it. Yeah, they're asking if you could like maybe post it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's real simple. It's CT, you know, Connecticut abbreviation, CT Todd, T-O-D-D, CT, T-O-D-D dot com. And it's uh, Todd Yerkes. Um, he's, he's an extremely talented hunter. I, I actually, you know, he actually worked as a, uh, a co-instructor of some of the, the boot camps with me as well. Um, but uh, he, he's got a collection that would just make most, most serious detectors do a double take. I mean, he's he's made some amazing finds, and and there are, a lot of them are on private permissions. Yeah. Um, what, what is? Yeah. Um, Michael Lee just asked, "What is your favorite metal detector?" Well, I mean, I think you know most of the people that, that, that know me and, and have been out with me lately. I mean, I know that uh, you know obviously the Mind Lab CTX thirty thirty. Um, the Mine Lab Equinox and the XP Deus you know, are, are the machines that I, I kind of take out most most of the time. Um, two weekends ago, like I said, I got a friend of mine into it, um, Garrett AT Pro. Uh, it's a tough machine to beat, you know, for the price, for the performance, waterproof. So, you know, we had the AT Pros out. Um, you know, my wife, you know, she, she uses either Deus or Quest. Um, a few other machines, but uh, you know, primarily it's the XP or the Mind Labs on free. Um, but again, I've got machines for every one of the other manufacturers as well. I mean, the White's MX Sport's a good water machine for fresh water use. Um, the Garrett ET Pros, um, they're, they're probably the, the number one seller anymore. Um, you know, just simply for the, the value you get for the price. So, yeah. So um, somebody um 
asked, um, um, hold on. Someone asked a question. Let me go find it again. Any boot camps coming up for the Equinox? Um, you know, people have asked about the Equinox boot camp. Um, actually, and, and you, can, you can say you heard it here first, so we're, we're moving ahead with an Equinox handbook. Um, I've been in touch with some some very seasoned guys and girls that have, have, have used Equinox, a lot of them during the development phase. Um, and and we're, we're going ahead to, uh, to put together a, a boot camp or a, a my lab Equinox handbook kind of along the same lines, same lines that we've done for the E-Track and the, 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 uh, the Explorer, the Safari, the Quattro, the, the CTX 3030. So we'll be coming out with a book later this year that kind of takes Equinox to the next level and unlocks a lot of the, the secrets, how to get maximum performance out of it for a wide range of conditions. But as far as boot camps, um, I gotta watch how many projects I put on my plate but you know that that's clearly an option that we're going to be looking at once once we uh, get a few more of the optional search coils available and things like that. We'll, we'll probably look at putting a boot camp together, but the book will be the next project. Yeah, and speaking of books, um, somebody wanted me to ask you about this from uh, from one of your other books. Um, a good friend of ours asked you um, asked us to ask you this about how did you find out how to explain about Ferris audio and conductive audio? Well, I was, was heavily involved in, uh, in the E-Track, um, actually the Explorer, all of the Explorer series as well as the E-Track project. I got to meet many of the engineers and spent time with the, with the MyLab engineers and it helped hear it from them and then try to repeat it back in a way that I could understand it, which in turn made it something that I could write about. But, uh, but, you know, spending time with the mind wave engineers kind of was the key to understanding how the machine itself works. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, um, hold on. So, give some stuff away. so we're going to give some stuff away. Let's take a boy first. Patches. So, we're going to be giving away some patches. Pick three numbers. So, we're going to be picking three numbers for the three patches. Ask Andy. Okay, so Andy, we're gonna be asked. I'm gonna ask you to pick a number from one to fifty-five. Fifty-six. Oh, no, fifty-six. Okay, so fifty-six. Now you said thirty-three. Right. Okay. Wait, thirty-three. Why is that? Okay, so thirty-three is Susan Coy. Susan Coy. Swan. Oh. Swan Coy. Your writings. Morgan. Morgan? Um, Swan Coy Morgan. Congratulations. You win a patch. Which one? Um, this one. This one. You win the uh, modern day Dig with Maddie patch. And it doesn't matter if they're on or not because. Right. Um, yeah. I'm just gonna pick, another one. pick another number. Uh, let's go with uh, 13. 13. John Favno. John Favno. Which is he getting? You're you're getting the um you're getting the black jean thing with Maddie Patch. And pick one more. Well let's go with fifty on the other side. Hmm? Fifty? Did you say fifty? Okay, fifty. Blaine bunch. Blaine bunch. Congratulations, you win the last Dig with Maddie patch that we have up here. Congratulations. Okay. So, we're going to give away two more things. We're going to be giving away two more things. What number do we have two up here? Oh, 57. So, pick, 58. pick a number from 1 to 58. Uh, let's go all the way to the other end. Let's go to 1. Okay. So, number 1. Ed Marvin, you win the. Uh, I'm gonna do this. Okay. You win the Civil War: A Beginner's Guide to Civil War Bullets. Now you don't have to struggle to find out what bullet you found. Fifty-nine. Okay. And now. Now pick a number from one to fifty-nine. Uh, let's go on the middle. Let's do thirty. 
So 30. Ernie Arnett. Ernie Arnett. You win the U.S. waist belt buckle. I mean, plate. Congratulations. Okay. And we got two more things, but we'll wait to the end. So we got two more things, but we're going to wait till the end. Now, so Andy, last time you are on my show, I asked you if you like pizza, correct? Yep. <laughs> now, I'm going to extend on to that with instead a pizza joke. That was not my idea for this. What is the difference between a pizza and a metal detector? What's the difference between a pizza and a metal detector? <laughs> not sure. <laughs> I tried this. Pepperoni pepperoni tastes better on a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Actually, pepperoni tastes better on anything but a pizza but a um, detector. <laughs> Just don't put pepperonis on pizzas. I mean, I mean on detectors. Okay. So, num question number seven. What does the future hold for you? What does the future hold for me? Well, um... Doesn't hold much for me. Sure it does. Um, you know, every time I think I've, I've looked for anything out there, um, it, it always amazes me. Um, uh, I get an opportunity to try something I haven't done before. Um, you know, a year or two ago, we were out meteorite hunting out west. Um, this summer, what I still like to do is go up to the northern upper peninsula here in Michigan and you can find natural copper nuggets. I mean, that, that, that's something I'd like to do. So, um, you know, traveling and metal detecting is something I've got a passion for. Like, so we're taking a group of 10 people over to England in, in the fall. And, uh, you know, finding history that goes back 3,000 years to me, it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's it's hard to describe until you've done it. Um, but, you know, I've got, in, you know, invitations to go to go to Russia, um, go to Central America. So, uh, you know, I think traveling and, and looking for, for treasures wherever, wherever my travels take me is, is I think, what's, what's in the future. For me, the future holds just more live shows to come. And lots of detecting, buddy. And lots of detecting. Yep. And lots of stuff that I may not know coming. No, we got like, something big coming. We just can't say it yet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and who knows? Maybe someone's going to wrap her house up in tinfoil someday. <laughs> who knows? And Billy's back on. And Billy's back on. Put her down as number 57. Okay, so now, um, um, do you have any questions for me? Well, let me ask you, what's, what, what are some of the, the neater finds that you found? And, and again, I'm not talking valuable, I'm saying what are the, what are some finds that you've made that, that kind of stand out in your mind as far as, you know, what they, what they mean to you? Well, to me, I, what stands out to me was this, um, I got this lock plate. It, it looks like you'd put a skeleton key in it. It stands out to me because it, it is, looks like, it just looks nice. It was the first target I've ever pulled. And to me, I feel like if I dug deeper, I could have found a treasure chest with a, with a billion more lock plates in it. So that stands out to me. Um, I got, um, Real. I got, well, yeah, my real sticks out because it's, it's a real. <laughs> you know, not, you don't find many of those, even though they're only worth like $25. Well, I don't really care about the cost of it. It's just that I like it, especially since I mistook it for a King George when I found it. <laughs> I looked well, at it. That's, that's still impressive that you, know, you, you make finds like that. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that have been hunting for years that still haven't made a find like that. So, uh, yeah. You know, you, at your age, you know, you, you've made some pretty impressive finds, and you know, don't don't downplay it. I mean, it's uh, you know, you, what, you, what you've accomplished at your age is, is pretty impressive. Yeah, and some other things that stick out to me 
are my gold rings because it actually tells me I have a chance against my dad when I go out. So you got a 1928 class ring. Oh yeah, and I also got a 1928 class ring, which I will... Really... out of the water or on the beach? Water. And I, I really like that because it just has a big fat gem in the middle of it. And it's gold. Well, I don't that would be pretty. It'd, that'd be interesting if you could track back who, who actually lost it. I mean, we, we found a ring one time from 1921, and we're able to give it back to the grandson of the person that lost it. So that was that, that, that was pretty pretty rewarding. Wow. Hmm. So. So, so what are some of the sites that you're think, that you're looking at? Honey, what's 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 on your horizon? Where, where would you like to hunt the next year or two? Um, a place, a seventeen twenty four farm site. Um, that's one of ours. We that's, we're doing a seventeen twenty four farm site this fall. That's a place that we have. Which it, we have full sort of, permission, sole yeah. permission. We have sole permission to it, and it's it's like six hundred, it's like six thousand acres, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. And there's two main spots that we go to, and that's actually the place I found my real. Okay, what else? Um, a lot of water detecting coming up. Yeah, we got a lot of water me water metal detecting coming up. Other than that, um. How does it, other than that, a place I would like to go is Europe. That way I can find some bronze axes from the um, Golden Age and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting when you hunt over Europe. Um, you know, history there takes on a whole different meaning. Uh, last time we were there, we stayed at bed and breakfast that was built in the year 1000. So if you think about it, that, that, that building has stood for almost, you know, almost... You know, two thousand years. Yeah. You know, a thousand years. So I mean, history there. I mean, if it's not three hundred years old, they're not even interested in it. It's not considered old. Um, we found a coin from the seventeen hundreds. I asked one of the guys we were with. I said, "You know anything with what this is?" He looked at it. He said, "Well, it's not that old." Well, seventeen fifty four to me is old. To them, they thought they thought it was funny that we thought it was old. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, when you're looking for coins that are four or five hundred years old or older, uh, you know, history takes on a different meaning here. Yeah. I'm going to go, one day I'm going to go to Europe with my whole coin collection, be like, this is what I've found over my years, and then they go, what kind of garbage is this? <laughs> and they'll well, be we, had, we had two people from, that we know from Europe came over here about a year ago, and I took them out, and we were finding mercury dimes and barber dimes and early wheat pennies, they're, they're looking at it like, well, where's the old stuff? You know, I mean, this is only 100 years old, it's not old. So, it's all relatives. To them, it's got to be hundreds of years old here, 100 years old makes it, I mean, if you think about it, a wheat penny is at least 60 years old now. Yeah. To us, like, to us, 60 years old is pretty, is a pretty good um, amount of years. Over there, it ain't considered good until it's past the 1600s. Well, the treasure laws over there don't apply unless it's at least 300 years old. So to them, if it's not 1600s, it's not considered treasure. So. Hmm. So, is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Well, I, you know, I'd, I'd ask you what kind of pizza you like, but you know, I'm sure it's not going to be Domino's because that's that's what we said you're in Gettysburg. So, what 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 is your favorite kind of pizza? Um, my favorite kind of pizza. We have a place around here that sells a pizza called the Jumbo Pizza. It's three foot by three foot, and it's huge. Um. And me and my dad, I I was holding, I was having actually a pretty hard time holding the, the huge pie. And my dad took a picture of me with with the with it and posted it up on um on our um page. It was it was three foot by three foot, right, Dad? Mm -hmm. It was three foot round. It was three foot round. So how many pieces did you want to be? Just one, or do you eat half the pizza? I got, I ate one slice myself. 
and Cuddy eat, and Cuddy eat anymore. Um, tell your and before and um this um we have two more prizes coming up soon. And um before we go. So before we go. So we got two more prizes coming up. So don't leave guys. So give it away now. Um, yeah. So um so very quickly we're gonna do our last two giveaways. Okay. The numbers. Have, so we've evolved and got all the way down to 63. Um, hey look, we have 60. Uh, that um, so we have 63 um people that shared. So pick a number from one to 63. Well, let's let's pick 63 for the person that just joined. Yeah, Randy Dearman. What does he win? Um, he wins the um. He wins the um. What is this again? One ounce silver. The one ounce silver coin, which looks pretty good. Cool. I want to find one of those one day. Tell Randy to get in touch with me. So, for those of you that won, that won, make sure to get in touch with my dad. That way you can um, that way you can get your coin, and your get the stuff that you got. And finally, we're giving away this little token bad boy. Okay. Um. So pick a number from. So pick another number. Well, let's go down the middle and say thirty-two. Thirty-two. S Stephen Steve Mason, congratulations! You get the um, skeleton coin. He's holding a little map. You know what that means? Both me, my dad, and you got one. <laughs> So make sure that if you won a, if you want a prize to get in touch with my dad, that way you can um that way you can get your your um your stuff and and hope it doesn't get lost in the mail and get sent to your neighbor. So so thanks so thank you Andy for coming on. It's been a pleasure. No, again, Andy, I enjoyed enjoyed getting a chance to talk to you and answer a few questions from your audience. Um, if anybody has any questions, you know, they can, you know, reach me on, on, on Facebook and be happy to answer any questions anybody has. And like I said, I mean, the next book coming down the pike will be the Equinox Handbook. So if, if anybody's waiting for one, it'll be out later this year. And if anybody's got any, any finds they might want to share, I'd be more than happy to, you know, take a look at them and try to include as many as we can in the book. I think that's kind of what makes the books somewhat special is, you know, see what other people are finding. Yeah. Can't wait, um, to, get a hmm? can't wait to get a copy. Yeah. I can't wait to get one of those Equinox copies because well, then I um, can... Well, you'll, you'll, you'll get a autographed copy as soon as we get them back from the printers. How about that? All right. Thanks. Um, so, thank you for coming on, um, thanks, okay. um, and, um, yes, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, and, you know, I, I'll make a suggestion, uh, you might want to reach out to Todd Yerkes and see if he might want to come on with you. I mean, he's, uh, very articulate, very well-spoken, and extremely knowledgeable when it comes to, to relic hunting. I mean, his tagline is, go colonial or go home, mm -hmm. and most of his finds are 1700, so... Um, he'd be a great guy to have on your show, I think. Okay, we'll look into that. So, All right. thank you for coming on, and I'll see you another time. Alright, great. Thanks, Maddie. Bye-bye. Bye. So, thank you guys for coming on, and, um, congratulations to you guys that won, and, um... Don't forget and, next week. And don't forget, I mean, next... Week too. And don't forget, in two weeks... On the 23rd. On the 23rd, we're giving... We're going to be doing um, a live show with Gary Penta. We're going to be interviewing him. MyDetecting.com. My, and he has um, um, a website called MyDetecting.com where he puts up these little cool um, minifigures of detectors. He sent us two, two of them to give away yeah. So, for, our, for the show on the 23rd. So if you come on the 23rd, you have a chance to get one of these if you share. So without further ado... And Rick, wait, really quickly before we go, did you notice what we did with the background? We took most, we took all the patches 
that you guys sent to us, put them up there. And, and uh, we might actually take this down. That way we could fit them all. Well, that way we can just fill this whole thing up. So if you want your little pads to be sponsored up there, you can. Because that's what we've done. So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you next time. Get out and have a digging adventure.